Um, so in the last video we were talking about the kind of principles or the basics of a flat roof detail in general. And what we have seen here already is that this is not just a general flat roof, but it is actually uh, a type of a green roof because we have some sort of plants growing on top of that room. So it could be just tiny, tiny grasses or something. Um, from the perspective of the construction, this layer here, um, the soil and the vegetation, the grass or the plants or whatever that is, is basically just um, working as a protection for the waterproofing and for the insulation that we have on top of the construction as well. So any other type of roof would probably have some sort of a um, some sort of a cover. It could be accessible. It could be something like um, if you think about garden tiles or a decking kind of situation. Um, in that case, you will have some kind of sub construction and then the the decks sitting on top of it, the same way as you would have it in a garden. Or it would be some sort of a cladding. So these elements will perform as a protection for the elements below, speaking the, the waterproofing and the insulation as well. But in this very case, the green roof is performing as a protective layer. Um, one of the things, just to briefly mention, one of the things I haven't touched on in the previous video was um, drainage, either in the shape of, of what we can see here in the detail, or more often you would have some sort of drainage happening in this area here. The water will kind of collect in here. There could be some sort of gravel that is um, porous, that, that, that is able to hold some water. And then usually you will have pipes or something happening on this side. So the water can actually go out either into a vertical pipe or just flowing out away from the roof and the facade as well. So we're not covering this here, but just as a little note, this is an important part of any flat roof or green roof as well. But coming back to the to the topic of green roof, um, what is really important in the beginning is to understand that we do have a distinction between what we call intensive green roofs and the other thing is extensive green roofs. So what is the difference? You can already see it a bit in that in that image just before. Um, intensive green roofs are, as the name would suggest, they are more, they are bigger, they have bigger plants, they are more diverse in the kind of different types of vegetation that can grow there, as opposed to an extensive green roof that commonly is, I'm just quickly flicking back here, is some kind of succulents, um, mosses, grasses, so it's generally much, much smaller plants. Of course, this also means um, an intensive green roof. You can think of it more like a garden. If you have a lot of um, soil, you can um, design it in a different way as well, as opposed to an extensive um, green roof, which has these kind of more smaller plants. Um, they are usually a bit more resilient because um, this roof is made for, for a slightly different purpose, and I will touch on that just in a brief moment. So the intensive green roof is, has a very thick layer of soil, being able to give enough space and nutrients for all the plants that are growing there. So the plants, of course, they have roots. Um, if you think about bushes or trees, they need enough space to grow their roots so they are actually um, growing properly and that they, have it, that they become in, stable enough within that soil as well. On the other hand, these small plants, they only need a substrate. So that's a, a more like a condensed form um, of a growing medium where they can grow. So again, as I mentioned before, the intensive green roofs, very often they are accessible. Um, so the inhabitants, the people who live in that building or even a, the public, they can use these spaces. Um, they can be recreational as well. So the activities can happen on there. Whereas the extensive room, roofs, mostly they are only accessible for maintenance. So hence the plants need to be a bit more resilient because you are not going there on a daily basis. This also means that a, an intensive room, given that you have 
bigger plants that might be more demanding. If you do live in a climate where you have droughts during the summertime or um, other seasons, you might have you have to tend for these plants as well. So it demands a much more regular maintenance as opposed to um, extensive green roofs on the right hand side. They have probably a seasonal kind of pattern of maintenance, just making sure that things are okay, but it's not as time consuming. Um, so this is yeah the point here. And then obviously, as I've mentioned before, having or providing enough space for an intensive green roof means that the soil layer requires a much more height within your construction as opposed to an extensive green roof. With an extensive roof, we can talk about roughly 100 to 200 millimeters of substrate height, which would be enough as your as your layer of or, um, the, that growing medium. Then on top of that, you would have some succulents and below that, the usual drainage mats and, and um, filter mats and um, um, protection mats and all of that as well. But the growing medium itself is only around 100 to 200 millimeters as opposed to the soil that can be up to a meter in height or even more, really depending on what you're planning to plant on there. And of course, that has also an impact on the weight of such a roof, um, which is very often a big problem or a concern that people have, that a green roof will be very heavy. Um, therefore, um, being a very big impact on your construction as well. Extensive roofs, given they are quite thin layers, they are roughly 60 to 150 kg per square meters. So that's a, a very reasonable um, amount. If you think about a person being up on a, on a roof, they would be in that same kind of weight span. So an extensive green roof should not be um, a considerable impact on your construction, whereas an intensive green roof could be somewhere around 200 kg per square meter or even much, much more. In that case, um, or in both cases actually, it's not just the plants and the soil and all these extra layers that are providing um, or contributing to that weight, but it's also the water that they are potentially, the rainwater that they are um, retaining if there is a, a rain event. All of those loads will contribute to that extra weight as well and they have to be considered in the calculations for your structure. So there's, a, there's definitely a significant difference um, for these two types. Um, therefore, intensive green roofs are more expensive as well because they do require more, um, more material. They also have an impact, because they have an impact on the construction, that might potentially mean um, that there's additional costs to be expected within the building itself, within the, the structure or the, the general construction of your building. So as a rough estimate, um, it is approximately two times more expensive than an extensive green room, roof. And again, it's probably two plus times more expensive. On the other hand, one of the, the benefits of an extensive green roof, that is, it can also be applied to a pitched roof. There are a few different options. Um, depending on what angle your roof is at, but it's definitely feasible. So it's not just flat roofs, but um, pitched roofs are um, possible as well. So just going back to the initial detail that I showed you earlier as well and explained you more um, explained earlier. So it's what I highlighted in green here. This is the part. Pardon me. That's not very pretty. This is the part where. Um, that green roof construction comes. There's many, many different um, companies providing these products and things. You can um, have a look at, at systems that are already available. So they come as a kind of like a package. In this case, um, this system here has a, a protection mat number one on the bottom. Again, making sure that this one is root proof and that it's providing a waterproofing to the insulation that is below that we can see here. 
Um, so again, the root barrier is making sure that the, the waterproofing is not penetrated by any um, roots that are growing um, downwards, of course. The number two, that is um, the drainage mat. We can see that on this layer here as well, which is here. Um, making sure that the water can flow um, on top of that waterproofing membrane, flowing into a specific direction that you have um, defined, making sure that the water is going away securely. And then on top of it, you usually have some kind of a filtration mat, mat as well, making sure that any types of soil particles or any um, kind of muddiness that, that we know from from outside when it's raining that that is not seeping through into that drainage level and potentially causing blockages or anything so that's what this mat is doing here number three that's that substrate um, and then on top of it number four that's your vegetation layer as well um, apologies for the for the german speaking tables here you don't have to look at them at de in detail but I've translated that lower part here because I think it's quite, quite interesting. Um, and this specific product that is um, that is available through a, a company, through a manufacturer, has a uh, water retention capacity of, and we can see it here, roughly 71 litres per square metre with a substrate height of 100 millimetres. Um, and... As a comparison down here with a substrate height of 120 millimeters, that capacity will increase to 83.6 liters per square meter. So this system can hold roughly 80 liters per square meter of rainwater. That's its capacity. So that's one of these amazing benefits um, of a green roof because they are holding back that rainwater, they are storing it and then only gradually releasing it again um, after a rain event as well yeah and then on the other hand again this one's an extensive roof, roof um, build up or a system in basically it's a, exactly the same principle you have a protection mat on the bottom you have a um, drainage system there's a filtration mat again making sure that the soil or any particles are not going through and then the soil and the growing or the plants the vegetation again the difference, of course, is the height that it will require. It is much, much, uh, it will be much, much higher um, and therefore also heavier in general. The soil um, really depends on, the height of the soil really depends on what kinds of plants that you want, you want to plant and also the type of the soil is dependent on that. Sometimes you see a mix of different soil types. You might have some kind of topsoil above and then something like a bit more gravel below, gravel that holds a bit more water, that's a bit more porous. But again, that really, really depends on what you're planning um, to plant on it. And then, of course, um, one thing to keep in mind as well, given that we do have a higher construction height in general, um, these sort of, that latch, for instance, um, you probably have to increase this part as well. On the one hand, that will increase your overall building height, which you have to be quite aware of. On the other hand as well, if the roof is accessible for people to walk on, you have to make sure that there's some kind of railing um, or some kind of protection so people obviously can't fall down. So that's just something to, to keep in mind. That's one of the, the big impacts of increasing that height of soil. Um, will have an impact on your overall building height on that side as well. Um, in the next video, we're going to have a closer look at all the benefits and kind of challenges that these green roofs have. Um, so stay tuned for that as well. Thank you.